What's good, YouTube? It's your girl, Asia. And it's your boy, BJ. And, and we, we back, back like we never, never left. left. Appreciate y'all for pulling up, pulling back in, where our family is everything is our motto. And we're going to be checking out season three of Better Call Saul. So a brand new season. But right now, I'm still feeling the residue of what Chuck did. Like, I'm still thinking about that as far as, like, the tape recorder and... And, and just what the blowback is going to be because Man. he already said, he, he even said, you know that you just admitted to a felony. Yeah. So it's like, I, I'm already feeling, I'm already kind of seeing where this might be going. Yeah, I just feel like no Chuck is just out for Jimmy <laughs> for whatever reason. It's just all just jealousy. Alpha, alpha blood. And then be, yeah, I don't know. I just think that because... Because from what we've seen, even though Chuck Chuck hadn't been, like, perfect, okay? Because he definitely has his flaws and he's done some some, some pretty crooked things, mm -hmm. to say the least. He's not done it directly and intentionally to Chuck like Chuck has done to him. So, for whatever it is worth, like, I just feel like Chuck is just not a great brother. Like, I don't care. I don't care. He's just not a good brother. I, I, I kind of felt like that early on, but it was it was certain things that I'm saying with Jimmy. I, I, I just feel like Jimmy has done things in the past, and, and, and you know, they kind of gave a little bit of context uh, between, like, their relationship, but it yeah. just seems like between siblings, like you said, there's always, like, jealousy, envy. There's things that Jimmy has done in the past to Chuck or his or the family that kind of, like, cast a, a, a bad light on him. Yeah, but it didn't have nothing to do with Chuck. But it's his brother, though. But, but that ain't got nothing to do with Chuck. It kind of do. No. You know what I mean? Even with the no. whole, even the whole thing with him being a lawyer now, and then him bringing him on, I just feel like Chuck just knows how Jimmy is and how Jimmy operates. And but and he really didn't bring him on. Like he worked for that. Yeah, he yeah he worked for. It, but all I'm saying is that Jimmy has done some things that left a bad taste in Chuck's mouth over the years. That didn't have and, nothing to do with him. And I feel like that's... But but I feel like that kind of metamorphosized their relationship to how it is right now and, and for Chuck to see Jimmy the way that he is right now, you know? I just feel like... And Chuck can't has, help himself. He can't help it. Nah, he just naturally got that, that type of jealousy and envy to, towards him because even when we were watching with his mom, like when, when his mom, when their mom passed away mm -hmm. and Chuck was sitting there... And the, the nurse came in there and was like, you need us to call because it's not a lot of time and blah, blah, blah. And then she was like, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Yeah. yeah and then, and then yeah. When, when Jimmy came back and she had already passed away, he was like, did mm -hmm. she say anything? Did he do it? And, and Chuck straight up said no. And, and, you know, that might be an indication showing you that maybe Jimmy might have been favored more than Chuck. Like Chuck you know, has been so successful in what he does, but maybe in his mom's eyes or parents' eyes, maybe they still treated Jimmy differently than Chuck. But but it just shows you, like, the dynamic of their relationship that, it, yeah. that it's pretty deep. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like I would tell. I would be like, yeah, yeah, she said your name. Like, you only that dang on jealous that you can't even really tell him that she was calling out for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I, said, I, like I said, I feel like there's wrong being done to each other on both sides. So it's like... Yeah. Where's the middle ground at? Okay. You know. Well, y'all, let's dive into season three of A Better Call Saul, y'all. Yeah. Um, Better Call Saul, y'all. <laughs> uh oh, we're going back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's a manager. So this is how he spends his lunch breaks. Sugar time. <laughs> Look like he did something wrong. You see a guy in a corduroy coat go by? Young guy, dark hair, corduroy coat. <laughs> he 
You never would have done that years ago. Say nothing, you understand? Get a lawyer! Well... Asshole. Why do you think he passed out? I don't know. Because at the at the Cinnabon, this is after all of this, right? Mm-hmm. You do realize you just confessed to a felony? Yes. But you feel better, right? Besides, it's your word against mine. I feel like this right here is like, this right here is like Chuck's all-time low. This is all-time low. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, whatever it was, he's over it now. And by the way, you're welcome. Well, Howard's breathing again. Jimmy, if you're gonna help, at least use a little finesse. finesse. Well, you're pulling the varnish right off the walnut. <laughs> well, maybe you should have thought about the friggin' walnut before you covered it in duct tape. I don't need your help. <laughs> finesse, fine. Show me. Like this. Gently roll it with your thumbs. Uh-oh. <laughs> you know I'm not doing that. <laughs> Look like the inside of a space shuttle. Oh my God, the adventures of Mabel. I haven't thought about this in forever. You remember this, Chuck? I do. And Mom read it to me. I read it to you. You don't remember. Yeah, I do now that you say it, yeah. What was I, like five or six? You had this weird night light that you were so crazy about. It was Daffy Duck. It was some Daffy Duck ripoff. It used to get so hot, we thought it would burn the house down, but right. we wouldn't let anybody touch it. You got a great memory, Chuck. Hey, what was the name of that little girl that had, like, a page for haircut? Don't think I'll ever forget what happened here today. And you will pay. Well, damn. Right? I'd have been like, what you mean? We've, I'm gonna pay. He should have charged up, Chuck. You. Okay, thank you. They need to get rid of that rainbow. Huh. So how's Chuck? A crisis averted. He's back to being the same old Chuck. Want to talk about it? Depends. It may or may not involve that thing you said you never ever wanted to mm. discuss. Okay, then thanks. I gotta get back to it. Don't act like I wanted this. Jesus, like I need more on my plate. Are you mad? I'm not mad. I'm just, uh, for 10 minutes today, Chuck didn't hate me. Mm. I forgot what that felt like. Wow. I say about eight minutes, really. It was about eight minutes. You do realize you just confessed to a felony? Well, now do you believe me? I don't even know where to begin. But yes, I believe you. Your brother is one world-class son of a bitch. Mm. No offense. I just really wish you'd told me about these plans of yours before you went out and did it. I regret misleading you. Look, you know evidentiary rules better than I do, but a secretly recorded tape with a problematic chain of evidence? You're going to have a hell of a time getting that admitted. I agree. Chuck, if that tape is useless in a court of law, what's the point? Because I can't think of a single use for it. I can What's that sinister grin he got on his face? Oh, yeah, back to this. <laughs> what is he holding, a magnum? That look like a hand cannon. I don't know that thing, right? He hit you with that thing, blow your whole face off. Look, look, he getting out of Dodge. She like, I'm getting out of here. I bet you didn't even know a station wagon can go that fast. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think he checking it for like a tracking device? Yep. Because how would they have known that he was there? It's 
got to be inside of something. Yeah. If it were. Because remember on Breaking Bad, it was like they were just like putting it under the wheel well and it would just stick or something like yeah. that. Yeah. This might be a little, a little different. It's got to be inside of something. They about to tear that whole dang on car apart. Maybe they took it off when they put the stick in it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he taking the panels off, the seats. Damn. Hey, mister. We're closing in 15 minutes. <gasps> Call me a cab, will you? Thanks. They're on their way. Thank you. You know, it's gonna bother him. Mike not gonna just let that go. He bothered. Cause he like, if they did put a track. Oh, <clears throat> automotive fuel cap. <laughs> he pulled the gas cap right off, so. You sell a gas cap for an 87 Caprice wagon? GM cap should be the blue on the bottom there. Maybe that's the only place he didn't look. He gotta be. Where he just took that whole car apart. No way. Oh, he did take it off. No way. Like, like, who would think to look into a gas cap? No, nobody. What? Are you serious? I, I bet more than anything, he like, they good. Who want to put that there? Yeah. Our professionals. And it probably wouldn't have even came to him if he wouldn't have saw that those gas caps were on sale like that. Like where anybody could just... Because mm -hmm. he literally tore the whole car apart. Literally. Trying to find it. parking attendant <laughs> god it would be like the most boringest job ever i know what if you do like eight hours or 12 hours <sighs> i mean it's an easy job but time would just go by like slower than driving miss daisy 3 30 in the morning seriously you get me that i don't know it's a real thing yeah then yeah i know someone who can get it how much look like radio shack What's up with this veterinarian, though? It's like he got connections for everything. I know. I'm talking about the underworld. Right. He got connections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't believe you did all of this in three days. Am I reading this right? Did you get the rehearing moved up? Yeah. The soonest I could get is the fourth. You moved it up almost three weeks. Kevin will be popping champagne. I knew you were the right one for this. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, you should have heard how that arrogant jerk spoke to me at the hearing. I mean, he's the one who can't even get the address right. Yeah, that's... Wow. I'm sorry to interrupt. It's almost 11.30. Thanks, Greta. I'll be right up. Are we still on for lunch Tuesday? Absolutely. Okay, the score is Kim 1, HHM 0. You know, your clients seem to like that rainbow. Think they're going to miss it? Wait till they see what's going up next. You're going to love it. Yeah? Should I be worried? There goes the rainbow. You just said. <laughs> Get that dang rainbow off yeah, the wall. Yeah, yeah. This is not reading rainbow. I think that thing, like, takes the static out of it. Yeah, it's like, like a takes... grounding wire. Made in half Fuji apples, so I got you honey crisp. Hope that's all right. I'm sure it'll be fine. Would you mind uh, changing the batteries? Sure thing, Mr. McGill. Change 1261 to 1216. It was me. Turn that off! Turn it off! Please. Uh, you did not hear that! All right. 
You know about confidentiality, right? So I'm not supposed to tell anyone? That's right. And we don't want you to get into trouble. If something were to happen to you because of this, I'd feel sick about it. Okay. Thank you, Ernesto. Look at Ernesto looking like. That's full crazy. <laughs> <laughs> How you gonna threaten me to, to fire me because I heard that? Like Ernesto's like facial expressions when he be, <laughs> he be killing me. I hope he tells him. He be like. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he can say something too. Mike is really digging to figure out, to figure this out, ain't he? <clears throat> My mind is still tripping on how low I key mean, they did that to put that in the gas cap. He's switching it because he hoping that whoever's coming to get that <clears throat> cap will will take the cap and Mike will be able to track them. Yeah. <laughs> Look like he definitely trying to like flip the game on somebody. Yeah. Flip the script. Now we sit and wait. He definitely got that 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 strikes me as somebody that eats pistachios. And you know he gonna sit there. He good to sit there all night. Right, steak out and all that. Yeah. <clears throat> The chase continues. Okay. So the hunt is on. We're about to find out. Yeah. We're about to find out. I guess Ooh. you can say the hunt is on. Yeah. To some degree. Oh, man. So, Saul is in hot water. Okay. <laughs> you, you got you got Chuck on your back. Uh, Ernesto is, is chiming in on what, what's actually happening. But see, Ernesto, he told him, he told him, <clears throat> you know, what he thought already so i feel like you know he might go back and tell jimmy even though chuck just threatened him with his life basically <laughs> what is his life basically threaten him with, happens to you threaten him with anything that he could throw at him to right keep him from saying anything about that yeah and i don't know i i don't i'm really not even sure about what was you know with kim and the 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 whole of, like the law thing that she's doing with the bank right now yeah, like Mesa she, Verde. yeah Mesa Verde my whole concern and worry <laughs> about that whole situation though is that she'll stop wanting to work with Jimmy because she knows what Jimmy did to Chuck mm -hmm. and she knows like what Chuck is capable of and you know her representation is on the line at the end of the day but but you see like everything is like things that you do to other people have keeps coming back it's like the past keeps coming to present on him and, and that's kind of what I was saying at the very beginning regarding like Chuck and Jimmy's like relationship. Right. It's like the things that Jimmy does is it, it it always has like a blowback. And it's like you can you can get over on some people and some people will kind of just let it go. But there's other people that you get over on me. It's like I'm, I'm going to take it to the to the highest degree right. and, and I'm going to confront you about it. It has repercussions. You can't you can't. It has to stop though. Yeah. Like because it's getting bad. It's yeah. getting bad. And it's like. You can't continue to cut, you know, cover your tracks, do wrong, go get up on people, exactly. or be dishonest. Right. It's, that's what it's. That's what it's showing you. But it's like his head is like made of steel. Yeah. Jimmy's head is made of steel. I don't know. As much as I like him, his head is made of like iron. And I feel like something, something is gonna happen to him that he can't 
like wiggle himself out of like without yeah. there being a really big problem with mm-hmm. what he's doing. This can get really real for him. <laughs> so we're about to see. I want to see what's going on with, with Mike, too, though. That, too. Yeah, I want to see where this is going to go with the, Who with the is whole track. following him? Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. You know what they say? The early bird catches the worm. I think Chuck actually wakes up in the morning thinking about Jimmy. Getting dark. I hate to say it, but I think it might be time to kill the lights. Oh, yes, sir. Of course. I thought it was early in the morning. Who is he waiting on, you think? I mean, I would think Jimmy. Because he keeps checking all the doors. Even though Jimmy doesn't have a key, it's like... I can't, I can't, I can't put it past this guy. Like he's paranoid about something. Yeah. Mmm. Uh-oh, jackpot. Man, this dude really outside for real. Like he got about ten jobs at night time. Right. They like vampires of the night. Wait a minute. Sure, he been up all night. <clears throat> But he moving around like pickups and drop offs, like he doing something. But we already saw what he went and picked up, so. <laughs> oh sh! I was just about to say, I'm like, is that Los Pollos? Oh, because of like the color of the doors and stuff. The windows, the windows. Are red. <laughs> so he they let the Los Pollos. Oh, oh hey, come on in. Hi, I'm Francesca Liddy. I'm here for the interview. Oh, Jimmy McGill. Hey, are you running early or am I running late? No, oh, sorry, I'm a little early. Never bad to be early, except in death and taxes and some other things. <laughs> <laughs> so you're coming off of seven years at the MVD? I am. Here's a question. How come New Mexico doesn't call it the DMV like every other state? Uh, just like in Arizona, the Motor Vehicles Division is part of the DOT, a division. Whereas in most other states, the DMV, or Department of Motor Vehicles, is its own entity, so... Well, I, for one, am not calling it the MVD. DMV all the way. What do you think you learned the most working there? Patience, diplomacy. You encounter some who are upset, belligerent. What about old folks? Lots of elderly drivers. You have to explain to them why their license isn't being renewed. Do you ever yell at them? I mean, geezers, right? How can you not? No, I would never, no. Nor should you. That was a trick question. You passed with flying colors. Very good. <laughs> and I see here both Word and Excel. You're comfortable with? Absolutely. Excel and Word? Wow, well, you had me at old people. Hey, here's a question. Can you start today? I can, uh... Philip looked at his watch and said... Can you just give us a second, Francesca? Of course. Um, thank you. He got these rocking chairs in his office. (laughs) (laughs) Don't you think we should see some more resumes? Like, a lot more? She is her first interview. Kim, you've been taking forever searching for a paralegal. I haven't found the right fit. Yeah, because you're searching for perfection. If it doesn't work out, we can fire her. It's no big deal. I've got a commercial airing in... 11 minutes, so the phones are going to be ringing off the hook, and I need help. I got a good feeling about this. <sighs> now, getting these oldsters to call, that's half the battle, so they need to hear a friendly voice. Absolutely. Speak loudly and clearly, but uh, be careful with the loud and clear, because it can come off as angry. Be folksy. Got it. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Offices of Jimmy McGill. What can I do for you? That's right. Jimmy McGill from the commercial. Folksy, be folksy. Say, is that a dog I'm hearing? It is? Oh, what's her name? (laughs) 
Always helps to mention Cracker Barrel. It's a hot one out there. I was thinking of going over to Cracker Barrel because they've got such great air conditioning. <laughs> Cracker Barrel. <laughs> I am so sorry. Thank you for holding. How may I help you? Jimmy is busy at the moment, but if you'd like, if you'd like to leave a message, Mr. Ermin Trout, Trout like the fish. I, I hear Cracker Barrel has excellent air. This one really don't want to talk about Cracker Barrel. Patch that one through. Your new assistant's a real pip. Yeah, thanks for crushing her spirit on the first day. You free for breakfast tomorrow? Free for breakfast? All right, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go inside, buy a cup of coffee, a meal, whatever, and sit in a booth. The guy in an old green Chevy Blazer is going to pull into that parking lot. He'll take a knapsack, and he'll go inside. I need you to keep an eye on the knapsack. Let me know what he does with it. Does he switch the bag with someone? I got it. What's in the bag? It's got to be money. Drugs? Is it drugs? Tell me I'm right. He is going to be here any minute. You going to do the job or not? I'll do the job. You charmed me into it. <laughs> oh, man. They're going deep down their rabbit hole, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Uh, I have a Poyos classic and a uh, coffee. Black. I'm telling you, you never had chicken like Los Poyos Hermanos chicken. He look all suspect. Right? Look how he looking. There's <laughs> a lot of people in there, though. They stay busy. Remember, Gus had that camera back there, though. He probably watching him. <laughs> you just Close never sleep. know. You just never know. <laughs> oh, you... oh, there he is. Look, he got the knapsack. Just making it so obvious. He's not even eating. Different part of the store. Are you kidding? Oh. No, babe. He said, I want to get a good look. Look, look, look. Look, look. You think Gus already spotted him? Yes, absolutely. As sharp as Gus is, he spotted him a mile away. That's probably why he came out there. Oh! Look. He leaves. He left with it. Come oh, on, you can't make this. I can't. Can I help you? Oh. <laughs> uh, my watch, uh, clasp uh, is loose. I tried to reach it. <laughs> oh, uh, allow me. <laughs> ah, there it is. Thank you. That was very nice of you. Is there anything else I can do for you? Uh, no, thanks. You take care. About as polite as ever, but got the smile of the devil. Just tell me what you saw. He came in like you said he would. Uh, took his tray of food, sat in a booth, put the knapsack on the floor. Where on the floor? Under his seat, between his legs. Nobody.
touched it. He didn't talk to anybody. He didn't even look at anybody. Finished his meal in five minutes tops and skedaddled. Didn't leave anything behind. So, what's our next move, huh? You got some real James Bond stuff in here. This car doesn't have an ejector seat, does it? I think we're done for today. That's it? That's it. Thanks for your time. So they'll go to the door. See, I think when Gus went over there and swept on the floor or something, that was a sign to, to not... tip him off, don't leave it. Yeah. That's why he got up and he left with it. Who's got your back? Huh? Me. That's who. I'll keep that in mind. How long you think that car was sitting there? All of, all of 20 seconds. Literally. That's the other guy, too, that was on Breaking Bad. Yeah, he wasn't there longer than like a minute or two. Uh-oh, so he went to go get the, get the tracker. <clears throat> so you don't know about the Mitsubishi Lancers. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks. What are you doing out here? I didn't want to call you because then we'll leave a phone record. I have some information, but I don't want to get in trouble. Trouble with Jimmy? No. HHM. I think I'm bound by confidentiality, maybe. If I tell you what I heard and not Jimmy directly, legally I'm safe. Ernie, what the hell are you talking about? I'm just worried about Jimmy, but if I tell him, I don't want to get in trouble too. Tell Jimmy what? And tell your friends, even if they already have a will, it's important to get it updated. All right, who's next? Mr. Witchell, come on down. You're the next. Oh, something not right. Jim, can I have a moment? Apologies, Mr. Witchell. Yeah, something not right. <sighs> what? I can't. Give me a dollar. I'll give you a dollar. Yeah, just hand me a dollar. Okay. Come on. All right. I'm your lawyer now. If anyone asks me what I know, we have confidentiality. Why do we need confidentiality? Jimmy, what did you say to Chuck? Kim, let me set the stage for you. When I went to Chuck's place last week, it was like the inside of a Jiffy Pop wrapper. <laughs> he thought his brain wasn't working because of the Mesa Verde of it, so I kind of told him that he was right about everything. Kim, he was broken. He was a broken man. I couldn't leave him in crazy town like that. But it doesn't matter what he says. It doesn't matter who he tells, because it's my word against his. Jimmy, there's a tape. What do you mean? Who? He, he taped me? How? I don't know how. He just did. Ernie told me. He said Chuck has a tape recorder wrapped in a space blanket in his desk drawer. And the tape rolled for a few seconds and he heard you. So, yeah. clearly it was this confession of yours. He taped me. She told him. Yes, oh Jimmy. Mm. But I'm not sure what he can do with it. Legally, anyway. I'm gonna have to do some research. Oh, he'll, oh, he'll find a way. Jimmy? get back to it okay we'll figure this out yeah i know mm. how do you go back to work with that on your head pleasure doing business with you mr tiller why thank you jimmy <laughs> hey thanks francesca you were great today you too those folks love you who doesn't Hmm. So, just got off the phone with my old crim pro professor. What did he say? Well, as we know, New Mexico is one party consent, so Chuck had a right to make the recording. But you went to him worried for his mental health. You said the things you did to make him feel better, which mitigates the admission of guilt at the very least. I think we can get the whole thing bounced under 403. <laughs> Look at him rolling the tape. <laughs> hey. If Chuck has a plan for this tape, I don't know what it is. 
At this point, all we can do is wait for his move, then act accordingly. All right, then. Thanks. Sure. Oh, hey, what do you think? It's Etude in Blue over Daydream Harvest. I wanted it to look like morning over the Sandias. I like it. It looks mm. nice. Doesn't look like a stock market crash. <laughs> no. <laughs> you okay? Kim, I'm good. <laughs> he said stock market crash. So just pull the tape. I know, but that's not how Chuck said to do it. Oh, sh shoot. Uh oh. on the next episode of Mike and His Tracker. <laughs> <laughs> no way. You are lying. Mm -mm. Look! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro. You can't. It led him to the middle of the, sh of the highway. With his tracker and a cell phone. <clears throat> somebody probably somebody wanna know who he is and what he up to. Well you saw Gus and saw him. Mm hmm it's, it's almost probably safe to assume. Right? Not At this to point. mention like saw parked a, he uh, Jimmy parked across the street and saw him he Right. Come on, right. we know how we know how sharp he is. I'm trying to tell you, Gustavo got like X ray vision on those glasses, I mean. How you gonna do that with some Kenny Poe shoes on? Not, not, not when in that suit. <laughs> Look, without a wrinkle. <laughs> I had bought one of those for my mom, like for like a Mother's Day, and they used to. Oh, they drove us all crazy though. Yeah. Once you start hearing it every day. Howard, and you parked over on the next block. Oh yeah, way over. Everything okay, sir? Yes, thank you, David. Oh, is he like security? Who is he? Jimmy will most likely break in while he thinks I'm sleeping. It just makes the most sense he'll try to steal the tape under cover of darkness. You really think he's going to do that? I do, indeed. How can you be so sure? Howard, I know my brother. Chuck! Open the door, David! Jimmy, go Open away! Open the door! Open I'm it now! The door. I swear to God, Chuck! Oh! You asshole! Jimmy, you pulled that heartstrings con job on me? You piece of shit! Oh, my brain used to work. I'm sick. I don't know what to do. No wonder Rebecca left you. Oh, brother Rebecca. Here we go. Oh. Is this it? Huh? For this, you destroyed our family? For nothing! Is that all there is, Chuck? They ain't even the right tape. I don't think so either. Or I'll burn this whole goddamn house to the ground! Jimmy, that's enough! You need to step away. Howard, you were a witness to what happened here? I was. And you? I'm a witness. Oh, I'm about to throw these. I'm about to throw this head, these headphones. Ah! Oh, I want to watch so bad. Same way he threw that tape, I want to throw these headphones. That makes me so mad. <laughs> I'm telling you. Chuck is like the ultimate, like he is the ultimate. That's like, a simp move. He a simp for that. He is a snake. He is a snake. Like he literally hates the ground that that man walks on. Like, <laughs> Facts. For whatever reason. Like. You can't tell me it's because it's something he did when he was nine years old. Like, mm -hmm. no way. I, I'm not. I do, no, no. I don't believe it one second. I don't believe it one second. That guy just hates him. Yeah, I was about to unplug these headphones and just chuck them. <laughs> chuck them. I just, I don't understand. 
I really just don't understand. Like, why? It's like he... Damn. He has gone above and beyond. Like, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. You can't come back from this. I'm sorry. There's no way that... There's no way. Just, he, like, just like he said, you, you ruined this whole family over this tape. But he, like... Ugh! He wanted him to do that, though. He knew he was like, he's going to break in in the middle of the night. Like, so he had somebody there, the uh, private investigator, to witness what Jimmy and did. And just think about that. That's like breaking and entering. Like What a square. Like breaking and some, like kicking down somebody's door. He's so lame. He's so freaking lame. So maybe that's why. But okay. So that shows why he had the private investigator there as a witness to witness and attest to everything. To be so you can have somebody to say yes, I was there too, and then you got Howard there too. So I feel like, like, like Jimmy, like, like he was walking through, like trying not to step on a on a minefield, like he like he not trying to step on the minefield, like he like tiptoeing and he just stepped in a big pile of doodle right here. Yeah, and it's all on his shoe, and there's no way. Like, like the implication as far as like what what they just said at the end right here. Like, I don't know what this gonna lead to, but it's not gonna be good for Jimmy. No. Like whatever, like whatever this was right here, it, it's not gonna lead to anything good for him. No. <laughs> this probably like, might have exacerbated everything to a higher degree. Literally everything. Now because he because he destroyed like- it. Criminal, like he, it's like he destroyed the evidence. He, he breaking and entering. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. You, you broke the door. The only thing he didn't do was like got physical with him, like to actually harm him. And we don't even know if he gonna do that or not. He might have slapped him. He might slap him. Oh gosh, this you know, makes me so mad. Yeah, I, I, I'd have had to like wring Chuck's neck. Like I'd have been like, yo, like, like shake him, like, bro, like, I'm your bro, I'm your brother, like. <laughs> Whatever difference is, whatever I've done to you, that that got to be a way that we can like fix it and rectify it. No, even I, though, even though, like I said, Jimmy did do like a, a snake move to him too by going behind his back. But I feel like the reason why Chuck is acting the way that he is because I feel like the whole Mesa Mesa Verde debacle it it, it, it really embarrassed him and you know he's not the, he's not the kind that wants to be embarrassed, especially in the court of law. Yeah, no, he's professionally. Not, but I just oh. God. I know. What's crazy about this is like, I, like I can't even, I can't even like speak because I feel like there's such a parallel, like having, right. a, having a real sister right. like, like that, having a sibling. That, so, <laughs> so it's like you kind of know like how far it could go. But you see, like how yeah. crazy it is. It's just like, dang, like what is it that I did to you that you hate me mm-hmm. so much and mm-hmm. you just can't understand it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Especially for you to do the things that you do. Right. That's the part that you don't understand. Like I can see how you don't like me, but to 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 like do the actions and, and to go like to the length Yeah. To have me on your mind to where you feel like you gotta try to like go above and beyond and do yeah. something and you just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing yeah. what's crazy is that Jimmy keeps on turning his head to it. Like no matter mm-hmm. what he does, he's still like I'm still here for you, bro. Like, I'm still going to be here in this hospital right next to you on, by your bedside, even though I know you doing what you're doing. And, and, and what's crazy is, yeah, like, yeah. even in that little moment, he was like, for 10 minutes, I felt like he didn't hate me. Like, yeah. for him to recognize that over knowing the fact that everything his brother does is to betray <laughs> him, to hurt him, to undermine him, to mm-hmm. whatever he can do to, like, be a, like over him to mm-hmm. make that bigger step, like some kind of way, like and it doesn't even matter, and it doesn't even matter, and it doesn't matter, it and doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter, like how hard he tries, he still freaking hates him. And it wasn't ten minutes; it was more like seven and a half minutes. Yeah, it was seven and a half minutes. Just saying. All right, y'all, <laughs> y'all tap in. Yeah, hold on, but the thing about with Mike and Gustavo. Oh, oh. Yeah. Say something about that real quick, too. I want to know who was on that phone, though. <laughs> who was on the phone? And the fact that, like, like I feel like Gus this was huge. got turned on to Mike by doing what he was doing with, with Saul going in there. You you got Saul. Of Jimmy. all, Jimmy. Okay, yeah, I keep yeah. saying Saul. But we get it, yeah. Jimmy going in there and, and sticking his head in the trash and, and, can. And it was exactly. And and, looking all suspect and. You can't even go in there and be like incognito. It was exactly what you were saying. He, he was sitting in the back <laughs> office watching, watching the cameras, it. 
because you know, like if somebody's coming to make a drop off, you are already watching the camera to see if there's anything suspicious going on as far before as, they even come. Before they even get here to make sure that the drop off goes good. Yeah. So when he started sweeping up and he got real close to to Jimmy and then he started going over there to the old guy, that was like a signal to like, no, nah, pick it up, move out and get out of here. Yeah. That's Don't exactly leave the bag. what I thought. That's exactly what I thought. Because Mike had it down to to a T, like He's going to leave the, he's going to come out, he's going to look, da, 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 da. like he knew, he had it down. The and then, yeah. and then Saul goes, I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy goes in there and does what he does and then, and then, bam, like Gus is like, he okay, sitting, he, and, something and, and, is up. And I think what got it, he was sitting in one spot, then he got him and sat in another and spot. Moved. And he eyeballing this guy. Of course, because he was watching him from the back the entire time. Eyeballing the delivery guy. And we know how Gustavo moved, like. Gustavo pays attention to everything because, like I said, if you have like a, a a restaurant that's pretty much like a front for your drug operation, you watch every mm -hmm. single person that walks into that place. Yeah, not to mention he was parked across the street. So I don't know if he parked in the parking lot and then he walked across the street or he parked in the parking lot and drove across the mm -hmm. street and Gus was yep. outside watching this. And that's why I feel like Mike was like, no, just forget it. Just just forget it. Like Something's kind of fishy. You probably messed it all up yeah, anyway. And yeah. Mike probably picked up on that, which was why he was like, nobody dropped, dropped anything off. off. Yeah. Like, there wasn't anything, you know. And, mm -hmm. and then that guy popped something. in. Yeah. yeah. And you know, you know Gustavo, like, he got cameras on the outside, so he saw down the street. That's why he, he, saw that's why he went outside, so he could get a better look, mm -hmm. you know. And he was looking in his glass to look and see what was happening behind him. Yeah. That's just how smart he is. I think I think those glasses that Gustavo has on, like I feel like they like X-ray, like they can like zoom in like telescopes. He can see everything with those glasses on. <laughs> he take them off, he probably blind as a bat. When he put them on, yeah, I see you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all. So y'all tap in, Jack. That was a lot. That Episode was a lot. three. Okay, this was a lot. It's getting juicy, y'all. Dang. Okay. Let us know what y'all think about this down in the comment section. And if y'all enjoyed it, give us a big thumbs up, a like, comment, subscribe, smash the notification bell so you don't miss any videos from Asia and BJ. And if ain't nobody else told you, I love you. And we're going to see y'all in the next video, y'all. I'm finna throw these headphones. You better not. I'm finna chunk these headphones. Shoot. <laughs> Bye, y'all.